So here we're going to talk about reactions with gaseous reactants and products. So we're going to calculate the required volume of gas reactants. Um, also determine the amount of reactants consumed using a change in pressure and predicting the volume of gaseous product. Um, so here's an example of this. So you have reactions uh, so calculating the required volume of a gas reactant. So here we have sodium uh, metal with chlorine gas forming sodium chloride. Um, so you could have something like a certain amount of grams of sodium. And we're going to do the, a normal sort of conversion like we've seen before. So here we start with grams of sodium using molar mass to get to moles of sodium. Do a mole to mole conversion based on uh, a balanced chemical equation, which is what we've done before. Once we're in moles of gas, remember moles of gas, uh, this was N in uh, the ideal gas law, right? So PV equals NRT um, uh, can be used at this point uh, when you have moles of gas to get to something like liters of Cl2. You would need to know other factors like the temperature and pressure, for example, um, or you could do this direct conversion uh, with 22.4 liters uh, if you were at STP, at standard temperature and pressure. Okay, So this first part we've seen uh, plenty of times. This is a blast from the past, uh, but it's only this last little bit now saying, okay, well, if we have a gaseous product or reactant, um, we're using our normal stoichiometry to get to moles of that gas. Moles of gas can be plugged into PV equals NRT to get to other factors like liters of, of that. All right, so let's take a look at this. Uh, one, one of these, uh, so sodium peroxide is used to remove carbon dioxide from and add oxygen to the air supply in spacecrafts. It works by reacting with CO2 in the air to produce sodium carbonate and oxygen gas. Uh, this is the reaction, the balanced chemical reaction. Um, so what volume in liters of CO2 at STP will react with a kilogram of sodium peroxide? So again, this is important. Carbon dioxide is at STP. So um, you can do a couple different things. So here, just uh, take a look. We have temperature at zero degrees Celsius of so 273.15 Kelvin. Pressure is one atmosphere. That's what STP means. We don't know the volume of CO2. That's what we're aiming for. And currently, we also don't know the moles of CO2 gas. Um, so this PV equals NRT, we have one equation, two unknowns, it means you cannot solve that. So we have to f find a way to get one of these two unknowns a separate way. Well, it's very common that we're going to be able to get moles of gas a separate way. Uh, and that's with our traditional skills like stoichiometry. We know we have a kilogram of sodium peroxide um, and we have a balanced chemical equation. So we could figure out how much CO2 uh, from there. So here, a kilogram of um, sodium peroxide. We'll do our normal sort of steps, um, you know, um, molar mass of sodium peroxide, our mole to mole conversion to get 12.82 moles of CO2, which is also 12.82 moles of sodium peroxide because they are one to one with respect to each other or two to two in this case. Um, and then straight from moles of CO2, since you're at STP, you could then do a conversion, say 22.4 liters of um, CO2 per mole of CO2. And, uh, and that would get you the same thing. I pretty much have always do this because it works for any pressure and any temperature instead of just banking on being at STP. Um, and then I don't need to remember any, any other values or anything like that. So I'll just plug this in here. Now that I've gotten the moles of CO2, I now would have one equation, one unknown, right? Volume of CO2 is the only unknown now, now that I have 12.82 moles of CO2. And then just plug, plug that in here and get 287.4 liters of CO2. So quite a lot. So just one kilogram of sodium peroxide, which I guess sounds like quite a bit, but um, almost 300 liters of CO2 that it's able to uh, scrub from a spacecraft is pretty, is pretty uh, seems like a pretty good technology. All right, here's another one. So another air purification method uh, for enclosed space uh, spaces includes the use of scrubbers containing aqueous lithium hydroxide, which reacts with carbon dioxide to produce lithium carbonate and water. Here is the balanced chemical equation. 
Let's consider the air supply of a submarine with a total volume of 2.5 times 10 to the fifth liters. So quite a, quite a large space. Let's say the pressure is 0 0.9970 atmospheres and the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. Um, this is a totally closed system. So if the pressure in the submarine drops to 0 0.9891 atmospheres as a result of carbon dioxide being consumed by this aqueous lithium hydroxide scrubber, how many moles of CO2 are consumed? Um, so it is that change in pressure that is with regard to the number of moles of CO2 that are consumed, right? So we're gonna take a look at the change in pressure. The change in pressure here um, is 7.9 times 10 to the negative three atmospheres. That will get us the change in moles of CO2, which is what the question is asking for. We have a volume, we have a temperature. Again, temperature convert to Kelvin. Um, not don't keep it in degrees Celsius and then you just plug that in so the number of moles of co2 the change in moles of co2 is the change in pressure volume over RT um, just know that you didn't necessarily need to add these deltas but I just remember that means change in but uh, I'm just being really explicit here we're not plugging in one of these pressures or th these pressures um, that's mostly just normal air right oxygen uh, nitrogen that sort of thing we're just concerned in the change in the pressure because that's what's associated with CO2. Um, so we're gonna get change in moles of CO2. We get 81 moles of CO2 if we were to plug, plug all that in. Um, and that is, again, quite, quite a lot of, of CO2 that was uh, uh, able to be scrubbed from, uh, from this particular submarine. All right, another one. Uh, so we have airbags in cars. They are inflated in a collision that is triggered electronically with uh, uh, a very explosive, highly exothermic decomposition of sodium azide. So sodium azide is a solid powder. Um, you run a, a little electrical current through it um, and it will produce nitrogen gas. So uh, that is the nitrogen gas is what inflates that airbag. So a typical driver's side airbag contains about 50 grams of that sodium azide. Uh, let's try and figure out the volume of nitrogen gas that would be generated by that decomposition of 50 grams of sodium azide. And let's say it's uh, uh, upon that, it's at 85 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. So I guess they're saying that there's a little, there's quite a bit of heat that's produced from this reaction as well. So it's not just room temperature, they're saying it's 85 degrees Celsius, so it's pretty, pretty warm. Um, but it is under atmospheric conditions, so one atmosphere. All right, so we have grams of sodium azide, okay? We want to get to moles of gas, moles of nitrogen. So that's something we're really familiar with already, right? We can go from grams of sodium azide to moles of sodium azide with the molar mass, and then do the molar mole, mole to mole conversion. There's three mole, two moles of sodium azide for three moles of nitrogen gas. That will get us to moles of nitrogen gas. So moles of nitrogen gas can then be used in PV equals NRT. Remember, that's the ideal gas law, ideal gas law. So you need to use moles of a gas. You can't just use moles of anything. Um, I find it common that people will put in moles of, let's say, sodium azide into the ideal gas law, which of course doesn't make sense because sodium azide is not a gas, right? Um, so we have to be really careful, make sure that we're plugging in uh, moles of gas here. But we have everything else. We always have R. We have the temperature, right? We'll convert that to Kelvin. We have the pressure, one atmosphere. And we have, well, we will get the moles of gas from, from this. Uh, so we'll be able to get the volume of nitrogen gas. So this is what this looks like. Like I had said, we have 50 grams, do the molar, or, um, molar mass conversion, uh, then do mole to mole ratio conversion. So we get 1.15 moles of nitrogen gas. So this was moles of N2, which can be plugged in to get the volume of N2. Again, we have Kelvin, we have atmospheres, plug that in, we get about 34 liters of nitrogen. Um, so 34 liters, that certainly seems like enough to fill, uh, fill an airbag. Um, so yeah, 50 grams is not a lot of sodium azide, but it produces a lot of, uh, a lot of gas and, and it does this extremely quickly. And that's of course, very important for a, a collision. Um, for these airbags inflating in time. So you need to produce a lot of gas and produce it really quickly. And so that's, that's what this reaction is able to do. Um, and nitrogen gas also is 
uh, very benign. Most of air is nitrogen gas, so it's it's a uh, it's something that is safe to breathe in and all of that. So this, that's uh, that's the that's the point behind uh, behind this sort of technology.